Hey y'all, it's entry number 31 of this off-season series where we discuss a different player's fantasy value each day as a group. We are another day closer to the start of the 2022 NFL season. Each day we'll drop a name, go through some positives and some concerns of their fantasy profile, and then I'll give my personal opinion at the end. Today's discussion will be on Jonathan Taylor, running back, Indianapolis Colts. We'll start with the positives with Jonathan Taylor's fantasy profile. To start, we gotta talk about his rushing talent. Jonathan Taylor got the most carries in the league last year with 332, and for good reason. During the 2021 NFL season, Jonathan Taylor was the best in the league in a variety of categories, finishing first in rushing yards, first in total touchdowns, first in evaded tackles, first in evaded tackles per touch, first in runs of 15 or more yards, and first in yards created according to Player Profiler. In addition, he finished top 10 in yards per touch, breakaway run rate, and yards created per touch according to Player Profiler. Clearly, he's a special running talent, and that makes it easier to trust him in your fantasy leagues in 2022. The next thing I really liked about Jonathan Taylor's fantasy profile is that his head coach, Frank Reich, has great running back usage over the course of his career. Over the course of his career, in an offensive coordinator or head coaching role, Frank Reich has done a pretty good job of utilizing his backs both on the ground and through the air, and getting production out of his backfield. With a more running back friendly coach calling the plays for him, we can feel pretty confident that Jonathan Taylor will see a healthy workload again in 2022. The last major positive with Jonathan Taylor's fantasy profile is his fantasy consistency. During the 2021 season, in half PPR formats, Jonathan Taylor had 0 out of 17 games with 0 to 5 fantasy points, 2 out of 17 games with 5 to 10 fantasy points, 3 out of 17 games with 10 to 15 fantasy points, 5 out of 17 games with 15 to 20 fantasy points, 3 out of 17 games with 20 to 25 fantasy points, 1 out of 17 games with 25 to 30 fantasy points, 2 out of 17 games with 30 to 35 fantasy points, and 1 out of 17 games with over 50 fantasy points according to fantasy data. He scored at least 10 fantasy points in 15 of his 17 games, 88% and getting a player with that kind of week-to-week -week consistency, as well as the potential to put up monster weeks as well, is very nice for your fantasy lineups, since you can set and forget it. Moving on to some of the concerns with Jonathan Taylor. To start, we gotta talk about how he doesn't necessarily have the highest fantasy ceiling for 2022 out of all the running backs. While Jonathan Taylor did finish as the RB1 in 2021, and is slated to go off the board as the first overall pick in most 2022 fantasy drafts, it's still hard to say if he really has the highest upside of all players going into the 2022 season. Derrick Henry has averaged more fantasy points per game in each of the last two years. Christian McCaffrey averaged 22.2 fantasy points per game in standard, 25.8 fantasy points per game in half PPR, and an incredible 29.5 fantasy points per game in full PPR during the 2019 season. In addition, he averaged 30.1 fantasy points per game in full PPR formats during the 2020 season. Austin Eckler was a near equal in PPR last year, with Taylor averaging 21.9 fantasy points per game and Eckler averaging 21.5. Dalvin Cook's peak in 2020 of 21.0 fantasy points per game in standard. 22.6 fantasy points per game in half PPR, and 24.1 fantasy points per game in full PPR was actually higher than Jonathan Taylor's peak in 2021. If you are just chasing absolute upside in 2022, clearly there are a few players that have stronger potential cases than Jonathan Taylor. The next concern I have with Jonathan Taylor's fantasy profile is the possible red zone and touchdown regression. Jonathan Taylor had 85 carries inside the 20 yard line first in the NFL. Second place was Austin Eckler with just 46 carries. 41 carries inside the 10 yard line, also first in the NFL. Second place was Damian Harris with just 30 carries. And 26 carries inside the 5 yard line, first in the NFL. Second place was James Conner with 16. According to Pro Football Reference, how much of an outlier is this? 
Well, the 85 carries inside the 20 was the most in Pro Football References database, which goes back all the way to 1994. Only three other players have gotten over 80, Ladanian Tomlinson in 2004 with 83 carries, Curtis Martin in 1995 with 83 carries, and Emmett Smith in 1995 with 81 carries. The 41 carries inside the 10 was the most since LeGarrette Blount in 2016 with 42, and the 26 carries inside the 5 was the most since Arian Foster in 2012, who also had 26. It would be incredibly difficult for Jonathan Taylor to see around the same red zone usage again during the 2022 season, and it's probably safe to expect some regression to the mean here, and likely fewer rushing touchdowns. The last concern with Jonathan Taylor's fantasy profile is whether or not the Matt Ryan acquisition will lead to the Colts passing more. The Indianapolis Colts got rid of Carson Wentz after he failed to lead the team to the playoffs and sent him to Washington. To fill their starting quarterback spot, they made the move to acquire former Atlanta Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan. Ryan has thrown at least 20 passing touchdowns in every season of his career besides his rookie year and has averaged 269.1 passing yards per game over the course of his entire career, according to Pro Football Reference. With a likely quarterback upgrade, there's a very real chance that the Colts pass a little more and scale back Jonathan Taylor's workload slightly. Additional thoughts on Jonathan Taylor's fantasy profile. Offensive line. The Indianapolis Colts offensive line ranked 12th at the end of last year and are projected to be the 10th best offensive line in the 2022 season according to Pro Football Focus. They are projected to have three of the five same starters from last season. Their left guard, Quinton Nelson, their center, Ryan Kelly, and their right tackle, Braden Smith. The changes being made will be at left tackle as they go from Eric Fisher to Matt Pryor and right guard as they go from Mark Glowinski to Danny Pinter. Jonathan Taylor finished as the RB1 in standard with 333.1 total fantasy points and 19.6 fantasy points per game, RB1 in half PPR with 353.1 total fantasy points and 20.8 fantasy points per game, and the RB1 in full PPR formats with 373.1 total fantasy points and 21.9 fantasy points per game during the 2021 season, according to Fantasy Pros. In 2020, Jonathan Taylor was the RB4 in standard with 216.8 total fantasy points, 14.5 fantasy points per game, the RB6 in half PPR formats with 234.8 total fantasy points, and 15.7 fantasy points per game, and the RB6 in full PPR formats, with 252.8 total fantasy points and 16.9 fantasy points per game, according to Fantasy Pros. Personal Opinion Jonathan Taylor is going off the board as RB1, about pick 1.5 overall on ESPN, and RB1, about pick 1 overall on Yahoo. Do I necessarily believe that he's going to finish as the number one overall fantasy running back in 2022? No. There are quite a few players that have already flashed similar or higher ceilings than Jonathan Taylor, and that doesn't include the possibility of other players breaking out in 2022. Do I think that he's the safest bet to finish at least as an RB1 during the 2022 season? Yes. With the first overall pick, you are looking for the safest player that could potentially finish as the top player in fantasy, and Jonathan Taylor is the safest running back that you can draft this year. He's young, finished as the RB1 overall last year, has shown some dual threat capabilities, plays behind an above average offensive line, has a coach that has a solid track record utilizing running backs, and got a QB upgrade. My personal preference for this year, and most years in general, is to have a pick in the mid to late first round. But if I get dealt first overall, I'm taking Taylor. For each of these entries, we will highlight a charitable cause or organization. Jonathan Taylor's My Cause My Cleats in 2020 was for No Kid Hungry. Here's a link to that organization below. And that's it for today's entry. If you enjoyed this entry, be sure to like and subscribe.